Good afternoon, people up there in Cyberland, good old U.S. of A. Um, <clears throat> yesterday I had the privilege of doing, being interviewed by uh, KSL, a gal named Deb, and it was really a, a it was a neat experience. Uh, she's a very nice lady, quite attractive also, and very intelligent, articulate, and she asked the tough questions. She asked a lot of tough questions, and I really appreciate that. Uh, and I kind of want to uh, hopefully clarify something that um, I said uh, before people get the wrong impression. It had to do with uh, Indian artifacts. And uh, <clears throat> I m made the statement that, hey, there's an Indian artifact there. I could care less. I'll step over and it'll stay right there. And it will. Um, I've, through the years and through my hiking and hunting, I've come across Indian artifacts, arrowheads primarily, and they stayed right there. I don't care. It's just when they've been one of my things. Um, and uh, she talked about, well, how would I feel about, uh, you know, a burial grounds? And again, it would stay right there, and I think everybody should leave them alone. Uh, so, but, but there's an issue here that really never did get addressed. And that is, there are artifacts everywhere, everywhere. I've hunted every from southern Nevada to uh, to parts of northern Montana, eastern Montana, and Utah. Um, I've been all over the western states, and I have seen arrowheads everywhere. You know, a lot of times it's just a piece or a chip or something along that line, a piece of pottery. You see what I'm saying? Uh, just because there's an artifact there, uh, they want to make it sacred ground that uh, is controlled by the United States government? That is ludicrous. That is so insane. You know, I wanted to make a comment, I never got to it, but, you know, in a couple hundred years from now, somebody's going to dig up a, a Pepsi can that didn't get rusted out, and it's going to become a sacred artifact. Y you get my point? Um... It just gets to the point, and see, this is how the United States government works. Uh, these, I should say, not so much the United States government, but these pe people through usurpation that's taken it over. Uh, they create these issues. They create these issues, and they come up with a remedy, and there's a, there's a saying for that. And then they enact laws, and these egregious laws, archaic laws, um, they push upon the people. And next thing you know, they control everything. It's like the EPA wants to control every drop of water. Um, just, just another example. So, you know, it's not that I don't appreciate the Native American heritage, because I really do. Um, as a person that uh, believes in the uh, Book of Mormon, you know, the Book of Mormon is about these indigenous peoples here. Not all of them. I don't believe all of them, but those ones are from the tribe of Manasseh. Um, you know, one of the sons of Joseph. Joseph was one of the uh, sons of Jacob, one of the 12 sons of Jacob. So <clears throat> I have an interest there, all right? And I have an interest in their heritage. I have an interest in them as individuals and as people. As far as uh, sacred ground, things of that nature, um, I don't know exactly what their interpretation of sacred ground is. To me, uh, God ordained certain lands for certain people. Now, if you want to call that sacred, that's okay. I truly support them, uh, especially up there in the Dakotas right now, and protecting their water uh, from these big giant corporations that don't, really don't care about the little people. They only care about um, their corporate members and the dollar, and you know they buy off politicians, and through eminent domain, they steal everything. That's just one of the ways they do it. And I support those people 100%. Um, I hope they can stop this, uh, this pipeline, this oil pipeline. One is we don't need it. We really don't need it. That's where it gets so ridiculous, okay? We can do this without disturbing the land, without destroying people's lives. Here we go again. Um, for those people that think the federal government controls all the land, um, you know, all the land, even land that was ceded to, to the United States, such as treaty land, um, that is a nation within a nation. The United States government has treaties with those people. 
that that is their land, all right? And then you get some big corporation who wants to make more money for their stockholders and for their CEOs, and they're going to, uh, you know, full steam ahead, and they don't care about those people. It's all about the almighty dollar. Oh, and they love to use this excuse. It's for um, national security, for oil independence, energy independence. What a bunch of horse crap that is. If they really wanted to be energy independent, they would be promoting these free energy projects. And I'm not talking about solar power. And I'm not talking about wind power. There's things that are so much more advanced than that. And they put the kibosh on it because they want the Rockefellers to continue to get their money from these fossil fuels. And that's another lie. They're not fossil fuels. They got, they've discovered this, that these things don't come from dinosaurs and ancient trees and things like that. That is constantly being produced. Now the bulk in oil fields up there in the Dakotas, eastern Montana, and I think part of Wyoming, is something like eight times larger than the, the known uh, oil reserves in the world. It dwarfs what the Saudi, Saudis have. And there's one in Colorado that even dwarfs that, all right? So, um, this is just a bunch of garbage. Um, probably a maneuver to steal more lands, and this time it's going to Native Americans. And for you people out there that think it's okay to steal other people's property, see, that's one of the things that you trolls never address. You avoid it like the plague, okay? You think it's okay for the United States government to take the rancher's property, their water rights, their grazing rights. You think it's okay for the United States government to take these tribal lands. You think it's okay. You don't care about these people. You don't care to get pushed off their land. You don't care what happens to them after that. Now, do you? You are fine with these big monuments going in and these executive orders, okay, like the canyon lands in Oregon. Um, this big monument in Malheur County, 350 to 400 ranchers are going to be kicked off their land. Those are families. And you don't care, do you? No, you don't care. You are the biggest bunch of damn hypocrites on the earth. You think because you pay your taxes and if somebody calls it public land, it's your land. It ain't your land. Get over it. You think somebody's always stealing something from you, don't you? Because a cow is out there eating and grazing. Oh, he's stealing my, he's stealing my grass. Oh, that criminal. That rancher's a criminal. For all you people that call Clyde Bundy a welfare cowboy and all the rest, they paid their taxes to the county. And the, any money that you paid, it, it got flushed down the toilet a long time ago. It went to the Queen of England or whatever. It has nothing to do with this. But you're so stupid, you can't figure that out now, can you? Okay, I got off on the subject. Let's go back a little bit. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, these, these artifacts and things like that. Um, Jesus made a great statement. Let the dead bury the dead. Okay? Why should the living be persecuted because of somebody died and, you know, they left something behind? That makes no sense. All right? We should be more concerned about the living. There's nothing we can do at this time for the dead. Let's take care of the living. Let's make sure they actually have a life, a real life. Let's get our natural resources back. All right? Because we can't do anything without our natural resources. And, part, and the other part of the problem is we've got to get a real monetary system. We've got to get the Federal Reserve out of this whole thing, the IRS out of this whole thing. Okay, it's a, spawn, it's a Ponzi scheme. And like all Ponzi schemes, all the wealth eventually ends up in the top. So all these rich SOBs got it all up there. The Rockefellers, Rothschilds, Bilderbergs, Warburgs, Schiffs, DuPonts of the world. They got it all. They have a real problem though. It's collapsing. And you know what? You need people. You, need, you can have all the wealth in the world, what you call wealth. It's only wealth if you can actually buy something with it. It's only, and you can't buy something if there is no production. You've destroyed the production. You've destroyed the production of the entire world. 
the U.S. dollar is worthless in the rest of the world. Oh, but you didn't think of that now, did you, Mr. Rothschild or Mr. Rockefeller? Yeah, and you know what? And all those mercenaries that you've been paying now is with funny money? Oh, they're pissed, and they're coming back after you. Yes, they are. So that's why you guys are going into your caverns and into your tunnels, and you went out in the middle of nowhere in Europe in your stupid castles that you've had renovated with all your security systems, and you got your private little army out there to protect you. How long do you think it's going to be before they decide? Man, you know what? Let's turn a battle against it because you're nothing but a bitch, a bunch of mafiosos. And anytime you have mafia families, what happens? They turn against each other. They get where they can't trust their, even their brother. Okay? Because everybody wants to be the top dog. You guys got to be the top dog only to find out that you really are nothing but a dog. <sighs> How do I get off on these subjects? Sometimes I do not know. Because one thing always leads into another. Uh, one of the other sacred cows that I wanted to uh, kill today was all these people that keep saying support the troops. You know what? If you really supported the troops, you would have made sure they never became troops. You know what? You would have made sure they had good jobs here because so much of this is nothing but economics. All right? You would have made sure that our economy was so good that we didn't have to send them over, that they didn't have to go over to battle, okay, for a job because they're nothing but paid mercenaries. All you Bush supporters, I mean, Bush is, I mean, my opinion is worse than Obama. You know, what a crook. You know, they knew that was an illegal, immoral war, unconstitutional war, okay? It was fraud by Dick Cheney, Rumsfeld, and Bush, and whoever else was involved with that, killed how many thousands of people? You know, over 4,000 of our soldiers um, and we're not talking about the ones that come back crippled and maimed. Yeah, if you people really support the troops, make sure they don't ever have to go anywhere for economic reasons. <clears throat> yeah, how many of the Iraqis got slaughtered over that whole thing? What a fiasco. And look at, we lost it anyhow. It's, you know, you people that can't see from day to day what's taking place, and, and, and we still got people fighting in these foreign wars, we should be out of there, they're immoral, they're unethical, they're unconstitutional. And if you really, and then here's the other thing, these guys come back maimed, PTSD, they'll never have a normal life, and they can't get their VA benefits, and you keep uh, electing somebody like John McCain, who sits on that board, that we're supposed to be, the veterans are supposed to get their benefits? What the hell? Come on. And Obama, who takes how many billions of dollars away from the VA benefits and the veterans' benefits and, and gives it to these refugees that are coming in? No, you don't care about the troops. That's a bunch of horse crap. You don't support the troops. You just want somebody to go over there and because you're so delusional, you think they're protecting your ass over here. And I've actually talked to people. I remember one lady I was talking to who was a relative, and you know, she made sure that her son didn't go to Vietnam. She made sure that he got into college. She made sure he had good grades in high school that he could get in college and he wasn't going to go to Vietnam. And yet, when I talked about that war as an unconstitutional war, it shouldn't ever happen in the first place. Oh, we got to fight the communists! And all those, those tax of, or, um, uh, what the hell are they going to, um, protesters that went to Canada, war protesters. Oh, those guys are such low lights. They are not American. They burned up their, their, um, cards. And you know how many people think that way? As long as their kids don't go over there, it's fine. Send somebody else's kids. Oh, ye hypocrites. You disgust me. You make me sick. Mm. Anyhow, that was one of the other sacred cows that's really been bothering me lately is all these people that keep rah, 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 rah. 
you know, support our troops, support our troops. And all these churches, you know, it's like the Mormon church. Oh, support our troops, support our troops. And yet it's right in their own doctrine that we don't do such things, you know. Right in our own doctrine, Constitution of the United States. And yet what is, the, what is the leaders of the church? I can't, shouldn't say the church. The so-called pseudo-fake leaders of the church. Oh, we support our troops. We say, That's all they got to say. We support our troops. All right? <clears throat> And when somebody does stand up and do, does something constitutional for the benefit of all mankind, like Ammon and Ryan Bundy and others, oh, there's no scriptural support for what you have done. And it's never been recanted. They have every chance in the world to recant that. So all you Mormons, you need to wake up. You need to wake up and look at your leaders and see they're a bunch of fakes and phonies. You know, they don't ever say anything about the IRS, which is totally unconstitutional. It is the Luciferian arm, the financial uh, Luciferian uh, support in the world. All that money goes for nefarious things, but the church, the leaders, excommunicate its own members for fighting the IRS and fighting the Federal Reserve. How disgusting are you? The scripture says that, you know, when you need to be free from the blood of this generation, I'm going to tell you what. When you're paying for the destruction of other people through abortion and through illegal, unconstitutional wars, you are not free from the blood of this. We are in a representative government, and those are your representatives. And you have the right to even change those church leaders, too, because you sustain them on a regular basis. All you've got to do is say, I do not sustain them anymore. It's over with. So... You are not free from the blood of this generation. And so many of you bury your head and pretend it doesn't exist. That's called the sin of omission, and it's a pretty bad sin, too. It can be very, very bad. Okay? So, okay. I'm here. I'm starting to ramble. Uh, I want to go back to our monetary system real quick. Uh, I think that's when we're most vulnerable at this time. I keep talking about it. Uh, monetary collapse. Well, you know what? Uh, gold and silver is the only thing the Constitution actually provides. But I will say this about the state of California, which has been operating in the red for about as long as I can remember. And they actually at one time resorted to IOUs uh, sponsored and printed, printed and sponsored by the state of California. And they were paying their government employees with it and worked just fine. It has worked just fine for, for a long, long time. Now, the, the, the money issue isn't so much the biggest issue right now as it is a production issue. We've got to increase production, okay? And then we've got to take the printing press away from the politicians that push the button and uh, print off all this money uh, or computer entries and they give it to their, their favorite um, lobbyist, okay? And gives it to their, to their favorite corporation. And we got and, and, and the Federal Reserve and the IRS is behind this whole thing. They've corrupted our politicians and all this big money they put in there, and they're all bought and paid for. And now they find themselves between a rock and a hard spot where they're gonna expose, so they're gonna toe the line for their file leaders. You know, that brings up another issue. All your Leos, all these you know, uh, <clears throat> alphabet soup agencies, you know, which is nothing but a standing army, you know, a camouflage standing army, rather than all having a red coats, you know, they all got their own little IDs and they all are so full of themselves and, you know, it doesn't matter which of the 3,000 laws that are passed every year, they're going to enforce them, right or wrong. They're going to enforce them because they're compartmentalized on a need-to-know basis. And there is no excuse for that. And interesting enough, they all come up with the same excuse. Every single one of them. Watch Gavin Simon when he confronts him. I'm just doing my job. So, okay, Mr. Leo, your job is to oppress your fellow man. That's your job, Mr. BLM agent, Mr. Forest Service agent, IRS agent, FBI agent. Your job is to oppress your fellow man. That's what you're telling me. All the way down to the foot soldiers, all the way to the top. You know, and then if you try to get to the top, that's so corrupt, you get nowhere. You get to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and they overrule any good ruling you have in the first place. Just ask them at the rancher, Mr. Hage, over in Nye County, what they did to him. You know, they won that case. Federal Judge R.C. Jones. 
said that the FBI, or excuse me, the BLM and the Forestry Department were committing fraud against those people. So they won the case. Goes to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeal and gets overturned. So, oh, where are you going to get justice? You're not going to get it from the foot soldiers, the Leos on the ground. You're not going to get it from their captains, or their sergeants. You're not going to get it from the local judges. Okay, because all of them are just doing their job. Go up from there. Try to appeal to a politician. Oh, your cause is just, but there's nothing I can do for you. All the way up. There is no justice because they have all violated their oath of office. They have all committed blasphemy against God. So as, as the words of Ammon, what are the people supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? We get justice nowhere. But then they, hey, we don't, they, we don't want revolution. We don't want revolt. Well, we don't either. But this is not a government of the people, by the people, for the people anymore. Hasn't been for a long time. And the Declaration of Independence says we have a sacred responsibility to overthrow this existing corrupt government. But the people will suffer as long as these things are sufferable. And man, we've been suffering for a long time, but it can only go so long. And I think God's about ready to put an end to the whole thing. I really do. I think he's about ready to put an end to the whole thing. And I'm looking forward to it. All the signs are there. Everything is there. Okay, maybe I shouldn't be in such an insulting mood, but um, I can't help it. I see hypocrisy everywhere on every single level. It, you know, there's a scripture in the 28th chapter of Isaiah that says, All tables are full of vomit. And that pertains to our time. And what you've got to understand what a table was, was either a theocracy or a, um, or a, a government of some sort. It could be um, I can't think, secular or a theocracy. All right? And uh, all tables are full of vomit. Every single one of these things, every level of government, every level of, uh, of the organized religions, all tables are full of vomit. And there's actually a good side is that people got to learn how to go by the Spirit of God. And it even talks about that later on in that section. I shall speak to this people with another tongue, with stammering lips. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, until the overflowing waters shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And that's where we're headed. And because consciousness is going to be served, when these, these lies are done, then truth will be established. And I can't wait for it, because it's going to be brutal to the wicked. It's going to be brutal to the evil. And I think that's about time to end this thing. Uh, God bless everybody. I want to put um, a word in for uh, my Native American brothers up in the Dakotas. Keep up the good fight. Hey, keep up the good fight. You've got a lot more support than you think. And all those Leos on the ground, they're sitting there acting all big and tough. You need to grow a brain. You need to learn to think for yourself. Get out of your compartmentalization and your need to know basis and your Stockholm Syndrome. All right? Those are your brothers over there. Those are your Native American brothers. Their cause is just. You know, take off your uniforms and go stand with them. Thank you very much.